you do a full time. Yeah, part time. Good for you. So it's working. Yeah, we've been at it long enough. Good. Thank you for coming out. Some of you got the ring, some of you missed the ring. So we welcome you to CFRI. Thank you for coming tonight. A couple of announcements. Uh, let's see. We have coffee, tea, bananas, of course. Restroom, ladies' room, men's room. Dana's in the back. Dana will be here all evening. I'll be stepping out for a few minutes and then coming back. Um, cell phones. Everybody, let's look at our cell phones and let's turn them on off or vibrate. If you need to take a call, we don't need to take calls. Please take it outside so we don't disturb anybody who's um, in the class or anybody sitting next to you. We appreciate that. Um, let's see, a couple other things. We have um, Brian and his, his group are actually taping this. It's really more for self improvement, is that fair to say? Um, so he is asking everybody to sign a release. Chances are, he's got the camera right there. It's going to be the back of heads that are in the front. If you ask a question, though, there is going to be audio on it. So um, the purpose is not to be resold or anything like that. So but you are signing a release for that. You will be turning those releases into either Nick or Brian because that's theirs. It's not a CFRI. It's, this is not a CFRI um, taping it, okay? On that side, though, we ask that there be no recording. Um, our speakers are pretty specific because they've got special content and they go over to other groups. They don't want this just hanging around the internet and people taking advantage of it. So please, if you thought about um, audio or video recording it, please don't. We, we ask you not to do that. And that's just um, out of respect for our, um, for our speakers and also per our speaker contract. So we, we would appreciate that as well. A couple of announcements. If you didn't sign up for Junkers to Jewels this weekend, you've got to wait until April. We are actually sold out, and that's very exciting. We've got um, a, a great lineup. We've got eight speakers coming in between Friday and Saturday, and then Sunday we take a bus tour. We do it again in April, the last weekend of April, so if you hear about it, want to do it, we'll, we'll get you signed up for April, but we are sold out. Our bus is full for Sunday, and um, we're very excited. Who's been to Junkers to Jewels before? Raise your hands. Oh, yeah. It's awesome, right? Yeah. Well worth it. Yep. So um, this year, too, um, just as a special thing, we added in um, my, my big question. I've been doing this for three years, and I've gone to every Jumpers to Jewels was, why don't we ever see a jewel? Well, that, this year, we've actually added in a jewel. So we have a special speaker coming in Saturday afternoon who's going to show us um, a real Junker. And then Sunday afternoon, we're going to um, actually go and visit the, the Junker that's now a jewel that's under contract. So we're really excited about that. Um, next Thursday, we have How to Get Your Deals Financed with Fern C. Burke. Um, so if you, you won't be doing another class like that this year, so if you're interested in that, we'll sign you up. We have flyers in the back for it. Uh, our general meeting is on October 5th. Wednesday, October 5th, we have Joe Barnador from the Note School. He'll be talking about note buying, if you're interested in that. Um, we'll be doing a Saturday all-day class on that. But he will be our speaker at the general meeting on the 5th. And then we've got other classes that are coming up next month, and they're already on the internet. So please be sure and check the website. At the end of the month, we will have our um, October newsletter up on the internet and also have copies available here at the office and at the general meeting. So without further ado, Brian Baker is an avid investor and educator, community leader, father, business credit master, and an online advertising expert. Brian has been investing in real estate since 2009. He volunteers as the vice president of the nation's largest nonprofit RIA. Where is that? See where I'm And he's a founding member of four successful realty-related companies. Brian is an online advertising expert, and he's taught investors, entrepreneurs, and realtors how to use that to get exactly the type of leads that, it, that they want in the locations they want for their business. So without further ado, we present Brian Baker, who is going to be doing a presentation on Create an Online Leads Machine. Let's give him a round of applause. You're welcome. All right. I am very happy, very happy and grateful to be here tonight. I love being a vice president of CFRI. I love helping out people. I love seeing people succeed. That's really why I do it. Uh, so I am Brian Baker, and I'm here tonight with, oh, sorry, Nick's saying I'm not speaking loud. If I'm not speaking loud enough, let me know. I can always yell. Um, I'm here tonight with my uh, business partner and business affiliate, Crystal Little and, and Nick Martin. And they're both subject matter experts here in the back. Uh, and they're going to be having a part in this presentation tonight as well. They, uh, they know their topics very, very well. So we're all here.
here to learn about how to fill out banded signs and mailers, right? No? Okay, what are we here to learn how to do? Online leads, right? We're trying to get online. So, the first thing that we're going to do tonight is we're going to talk about a case study. We're going to talk about a property that came in through, uh, through my wife and I, our, uh, our online lead machine. We're going to talk about the thought process that that person went through and how they came in and how we captured them. And then we're going to tell you how to set up your own lead, online lead machine so that you can do the same thing. We're going to walk you through the entire process. A lot of this, most, like 95% of this, is unscripted uh, and live. Okay, we're going to be having a lot of live demos, a lot of stuff that you can follow along with on your own devices. Okay? Um, there are a couple of assumptions made that aren't up here. And uh, don't fill in any more if I, have, if I miss any. Uh, that is that you have a Google account, a Gmail account or something. Uh, that you have a Facebook account if you want to do Facebook ads, and that you have your own website already. Now, if you don't have any or all of those, don't worry. They're, most of them are free, right? You can get a lot of them pretty easily. So if you like what you see, then I encourage you to go get your own accounts, your own website set up, or hire somebody to do that for you. Okay? You get it done. All right. Oh, yes, the reason for the title, Ready, Fire, Aim. I'm vice president. I meet a lot of people. I talk to a lot of people in the organization. And a lot of people think they have to be perfect before they start. Not true at all. Not true at all. Just start. Do something. Okay? Um, you know, 80% is better than 0%. 40% is better than, two, than uh, 0%. So just start. This is all about taking action. You're here to learn something, and I hope you go home and do something with it. Okay? Or even do it right here. Get it done. I'm here to help you out. Nick and Crystal are here to help you out as well. And with that, I'm going to start with the case study called Midstate. This is actually a house in Newport Ritchie, which my wife and I affectionately call the Bug House. Some of you may have seen this house. It was a deal a month, a couple months ago. Uh, it's Newport Ritchie. This is how it looked when we first got there, when we first received a photo of it. Single family residence, four or two. Uh, the seller was a single mom with two children. Uh, she's been living there for a couple years. It's a great location, very convenient. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys know Newport Ritchie. It's over by uh, it's over by Clearwater, that that sort of region. Uh, very nice area, a lot of amenities. Uh, the house itself, crappy house, nice neighborhood, very good catch. Uh, the, it did have a major problem. Okay, the major problem was that it had bugs in the bug house. Of course, to us, that means money. We love bugs. Give us bugs. We like money. So we took it as a rehab flip. So here's some pictures before the repairs. All these black dots are bugs. Okay. I don't know if you can see all that. There's also roof issues going on. There's a lot of other, uh, let me see, there's a lot of uh, water leakage. And I'll show you the, the, the trash in just a moment. But yeah, all these black dots here were uh, German cockroaches and their, and their leavings. Now I don't know how many of you know about German cockroaches, but they are the worst kind to have in your house because they never go away. They are extremely hard to get rid of. Very hard. She tried for three years. I never set foot in the property. <laughs> My wife did. Uh, she totally sprayed herself after she got out. She, the first time she set foot in the property, she said that all she could smell was raid. As soon as the lady opened the door, <sighs> raid. You know, bug killer. That's all she smelled. Just the lady was trying to bomb the house constantly. She's spraying raid all the time. She's living there with two little kids, elementary school kids. Lady's starting to, you know, and we're talking to this lady, and she's like, she's not making complete sense sometimes. You know, it's kind of like, I think the rain might be affecting you. You need to start getting out of the house, get some fresh air. Um, right. What was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So, anyway, uh, this is how they were living. Oh, my God. No wonder they have roaches, right? They don't take care of the place. How many, how many of you see this all the time? How many of you go out and see houses like this? A few of us. We see it all the time. We go to houses where pets are running around, crapping all over the place, and barf everywhere. And I mean, it's just, it just smells like money. That's money, right? We're investors. We're professionals. This kind of stuff equals money. I don't want any of it, but I'll toss it out for them. Uh, oh, yeah. The other thing is that um, part of what was attracting the roaches is she was she literally used 400,000 gallons of water in a two-month period. Mm. I don't even know how that's possible, but I got the bill for it, mm -hmm. so I know it's possible. <laughs> I had to pay for her water lane. 400,000 gallons of, of used water in a single house. Wow. 
Anyway, after repairs, made it look nice. Made it look pretty. No more bugs, no more trails on the wall, nothing flying around or falling off door sills or anything like that. The house is beautiful. Put it under contract. So had it sold in three days. Here's the numbers on that deal. And there's the deal of the month article. We got into it for 60000 The ARV, the after repair value, was 125000 to begin with. So we were in it for less than 65% MAYO. Okay? This is a really good catch. Repairs, fairly minimal, 25000 Had to rip out the kitchen because, well, had to rip out all the appliances because everything had bugs. Just bugs everywhere. Uh, all said and done, about, uh, I think it was about five months later, because we ended up going through the slow season, $24,000 in profit. Who would like to make $24,000 in profit off an online lead? Yeah. <coughs> and most of the communication with her was email. Probably 80% of communication was email. I don't like talking on the phone. I don't know if, how many of you guys have heard me talk before, but I don't like talking on the phone. I have an engineering background originally. So uh, any talking that does happen on the phone, my wife takes it, and I try to I try to keep everything by email, but sometimes it slips through the cracks. Yeah. Anyway, um, we're going to show you how to get this kind of deal with your online leads machine. All right, let me catch up to myself here. Do I have any questions on that on that property in the meantime? Yeah. Yes, sir. How long did we hold it in front of? Five and a half months. Five and a half. Yeah. Yeah. And we had to take care of the roof and the bugs. And flooring and a whole bunch of different stuff. All right. So, the process of the sale. So, how many of you have heard of a sales funnel? Raise your hands. All right, so about half of you. Okay, so for some people this would be a new concept. Um, it's all about the process of what, the, what your client is doing if you're a business and what you're doing as a business for your client. Okay, you want to lead them down a pathway to doing business with you. In this case, in the case of Midstate, what did the seller do? Okay, well, she became a very motivated seller. She had a total house infestation. Total house. I mean, it was so bad, literally, it was so bad that city inspectors, a city inspector went in there, he'd been working for 20 years. Mm -hmm. He came out and said, this is the worst I've ever seen. And my wife, my wife sprayed him down after that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when an inspector says it's bad, it's bad. The lady, she was previously a beauty queen. I don't know how this happens. Wow. <laughs> you know? wow. And now she's living in this filth and she can't stand it anymore. She gets to the point where she's like, snap, I gotta do something. I am now super motivated. I have an emotional issue I need to take care of. So, she took action. Okay, at the point that she decided to take action, did she wait for a, sign to, or a mailer to show up in the mailbox? No. Did she wait for an ad to come across the TV? Did she go pick up a newspaper? Did she go drive around the neighborhood looking for a We Buy Houses sign? No, she does what all of us do. She goes online for a solution. She goes to Google. Help me. I need to sell my house fast. What can I do? Right? That's what people do when they become super motivated. And that's the kind of people that we like best as investors because we can help them and they can help us. She needed to make positive change in her life. And we made that possible for her. And now she's living in a much cleaner environment with her kids. This was her mental process. Okay, and think about the way that, that you buy or sell things online yourself. Okay, now you may, your case may not be as extreme as hers, but you get motivated. At some point, your mind says, I gotta have it. I gotta go to Amazon and I gotta get that product. Or I gotta have a solution, so I need to go to Google and find out what the answer is. That's all she did, right? Except her dollar amounts on a bit larger scale, okay? She started with an emotion. What do we do with our emotions? We want to back them up with logic. Where do you find logic? Online. You find logic on Google. It doesn't give you emotion back, it gives you logic back. Right? It gives you answers. Now once she found her, once she justified her emotion with logic, she then had to build up trust. Trust that something could be done. Trust that a solution could be made. And once the trust was built, she was willing to do a deal. Okay? Because the integrity was there. She had to justify her emotion. Her, her motivation. She had to verify that what she, the solution she found was valid for her, and then she was willing to start making that commitment. That's the process that we all go through. Every day, every decision we make, every solution that we look for. That's her side of things. What did we do? We set up a win-win before we even met her. We were ready. 
We're looking for her. Okay? We knew exactly who, what, and where we wanted. I targeted my ads to that town. I knew exactly what kind of person I wanted to get because I knew the neighborhoods that I was looking for. I knew that I was looking for rehabs and or subject to properties, properties that I could take over financing on. Locations, we like suburbs. There's too much competition in town for us, so we don't go to town. We stay in the suburbs. Port Richie is a nice town. Ideal clients. Our ideal clients are between the ages of 30 and 50 years old, generally. They're family oriented, low to middle income, most of the time. And they're always in need of a drastic, positive change in their lives. We can't help them unless they need a positive change. Does anybody have any questions? I saw a hand go up. Does this all make sense? Raise your, raise your right pinky if this is making sense. Right pinky. I got a lot of right pinkies, some are missing. Everybody's got a right pinky, right? There you go. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Here's our side of the equation, okay? This is her needs right here. Let me make sure I got this terminology right. This is her, excuse me, her process. These are her needs, okay? This is what she's trying to fulfill, okay? And this is what we're providing, okay? She's going to go online. She's going to look for a solution. We provide a solution in the form of an ad. She's going to go and look at the appearance of that solution. Does it look credible? Does it look like it makes sense? We provide the appearance. She's going to look for integrity in that solution. Do we provide her a sense of integrity that we know what we're doing and that we're going to do it for her? Yeah, that's what we provide. Once that integrity is built, then she can start trusting and then committing to a deal. Sounds reasonable, right? It's what we all do every day. It's a process we all go through. Every solution we look for. So to make that tangible, a little more tangible, this is what happened, right? Let me flip back. Emotion, logic, trust, deal. Emotion. She went and did a search. She's looking for appearances on a website. Does the website, is it congruent? Does it make sense? Is it professional? Is it good enough to contact these people and start a conversation? Kind of look for integrity there. Once I have that integrity, am I willing to commit to doing a deal? And then we're at the bottom of the deal funnel. Okay? Her funnel is falling into the search, into the website, converting into a contact form, and then converting into a deal. That's the funnel we're taking her down. And we're doing it with these items here. Okay? These are the, these are the, uh, the nouns, these are the verbs almost, right? These are what's happening. She's doing her online search on Google. She's seeing our ads or our website based on SEO. She decides to go into the website based on what she sees there, right? The website has the appearance. We're professionals. We know what we're doing. We're going to help you fast because you have a, you need a solution right now. Great. I'll fill out your contact form. You look good. Contact form. Contact's made. Okay. Do we show integrity in how we're contacting each other? We have our email offers. We have a process, a step, a few uh, emails that we send out to start building that. Once she feels there's trust there, she commits to doing the deal, and we make it to the closing, which is the bottom of the funnel. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. All right. Who does that not make sense to? Anybody? Anybody have any questions? You have an expert in front of you. You have two in the back. If you have any questions, now's the time. You're here. Ask questions. You're going to get into the nuts and bolts of all this, right? The yeah, actual. Yeah. Okay. Of course. But you got to understand where the it's coming from. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't understand the big picture, then it's kind of like, you know, picking the letter D out of the alphabet, saying, "Oh, what's this? Yeah, that's letter D. What's that mean? Right? You got to know the whole alphabet." Alright, so all of these have numbers associated with it. Okay, this is where it starts getting a little more technical. Each of these has a number and a statistic associated with it that you want to constantly improve. Now, traditionally, these are the kind of numbers that look that we look at for any form of marketing, whether it's paper or online or otherwise. 100% of people, that could mean your pool of uh, people that you're looking for, that you're uh, sending your ad to, are going to see your ad. If it's a mailer, they're going to see your mailer, and they might toss it out, or they might keep it. If it's an online ad, they're going to see your ad, they might click on it, or they might not. Okay, but they're going to see it. 5% of the people that see your ads, typically, 3 to 5%, okay, should be responding to your ads if you're targeting the right kind of people. Okay, so now if we put, we'll talk about numbers in a second. Now, five, of those 5% of people that actually respond to your ad, that make it into your website, 10% of those, typically, will initiate contact. 
not everybody's going to believe that you know what you're doing. Not everybody's really there to do business with you in the first place. Okay? Of those 10% that request the offers and make it through your contact form, 20% will lead to a closed deal. This is typical. Okay? This is typical. Let me, let me go back to this real quick. Make sure that you understand what these numbers mean. So I, I want to, if you have any questions, just throw your hand up or shout it out. Any questions about any of these? Yes, Jennifer. What was the PPC standing for again? PPC is pay-per-click ads, oh, which is you. the kind of ads I'm going to show you how to do in just a moment. Okay. Yes, sir. So you think you're closing one deal in every 400 people you see your ads? One deal in every thousand that people see my ads. Thousand. Yeah. 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 Um, mailers, online ads, whatever. It's all the same. One in a thousand. Any other questions? Okay, you have to understand your, your numbers. It's very important as an advertiser to track what you're doing. So if you're not getting those kind of numbers, 100%, 5%, 10%, 20%, then you need to improve or you need to change. Okay? You gotta do better. You can do better. Not only do you have to know your rates, which are these percentage rates here, you also have to know what it costs to achieve each of those. Okay? In the case of online ads, well, let's, let's go to the mailers real quick. How much does each mailer cost? Like a dollar, dollar twenty-five after gas, go to the mail post office or whatever it takes, right? That's a per impression. Every mailer you send out, somebody sees. It's an impression, right? With online ads, everybody sees them for free and you don't pay a dime for them looking at it. But once they click on it, well, that's a response. Then you pay money. Cost per click. Okay, with a mailer, they see it and then they respond, but there's only a certain amount of people that respond, right? It's going to be 10% of people that respond, or excuse me, 5% of people that respond, okay? So it's different for a mailer versus, uh, versus online ad. Online ad is a cost per click. So if you have a thousand people in and uh, 50 of them respond and it's $10 per click, you're still only paying $10 for each of those people to respond. Okay, now, with a mailer, if you send out a thousand, you've already spent, uh, what, uh, 12, you know, $1.25 times a thousand, right? 1250 you already spent it. It's already gone. Just to get that 5% response still, right? You're only spending per response. So it's slightly different in that regard. Thousand in, thousand people in. If there's a, if you get down this far in the funnel, 10% of the people are actually making it through. So this would be a thousand people, 50 of those made it into the website, five of those actually requested an offer, and it cost $10 per click, you're looking at $100 per head at that point, $100 per offer. Now, if only 20% of those actually accept your offer, you're talking about one out of 1,000, and if it's $10 per click and 50 of them clicked on it, you spent $500 for a deal. Does that make sense? If you're doing a mailer, you spent $12.50 for everybody to see it. You spent $12.50 for a deal or any number of deals that you got split it amongst the number of deals that you got. It's very important to know how much money you're spending on your ads. You have to know how much money and how, how well they're doing, because then you know your efficiency, right? It's all about doing better all the time. It's all about creating systems. Do I have any questions on this? Is that $10 per click a fixed rate, or is, no, does it vary? That varies. Okay. Yeah, with online ads, it varies by the minute. It really does. It's very liquid. When you say by the minute, what does that mean? It, I mean, it varies. The cost per click varies by the minute. It really, it varies by the minute on the system that they use. Google is a very complex and very highly used system, and our cost per click depends on demand and supply of who is competing for those different ads. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Are there any other questions? So, in the situation here. How much did you spend to get the deal? Five hundred? Yes. Okay. Yeah. If I was paying ten dollars per click on average, mm -hmm. five hundred per deal. Is that how many it took you? How many clicks did that it took to get the deal? Fifty clicks. Fifty clicks. One thousand people seeing it. Okay. So one thousand people saw it. Fifty clicked, and out of those fifty, you got one to close. Yeah. The deal. So one thousand people saw the ad. Fifty people clicked on it and went to my website. Uh, of those that went to my website, five said, "Hey, send me an offer." And of the five that got an offer, one said, "Sure." Okay. That makes sense. Those are those are normal numbers that we should we should strive for. You should strive for those numbers. Okay. Yeah. You should, well, obviously, you should strive for better. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, better. At least that is a yeah. Thing. That's a good benchmark. Okay. Can you guys hear me in the back? Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Oops, way in the back. All right. All right. So, here comes the meat of the presentation. All right, we're going to build an ad for Google. We're going to start this pipeline, right? We're going to start this funnel. We're going to start right here because we don't control the search, but we control the ads, right? This is where we come in. This is where she came in. This is where we start helping her go down the funnel. All right. So we're going to build an ad for Google. And to do that, we're going to use Google AdWords. Okay, that's adwords.google.com. And we'll log in in just a moment. First, I want to make sure that we get a kind of overview of the structure of AdWords. This is kind of how it works. And we'll go into this in a little more detail here in a sec. AdWords has the following structure. It starts out with a campaign at the high level. Then it has, uh, each campaign has multiple ad groups that you can put into it. And then each ad group can have multiple uh, keywords and ads associated with it. So a campaign would be something like, um, would be the, the ads that you're running for a particular business. If you're a realtor investor, you want a campaign for your realtor side, and you want a separate campaign for your investor side. You don't want to mix the two. If you're running ad groups as an investor and you want to get, you want to get buy and holds and you want to get rehabs, well, you want to run a separate ad group for each of those. You don't want to mix the two. You want to keep them separate. Keywords and ads, they belong to the ad group that they're a part of. We'll go through creating all the way to this point. All right? So, I'll leave that for next. Let me switch over to the demo. And again, if you have any questions, shout it out. So we're going to go, I'm going to go to Internet Explorer here. Um, I want you to log into your Google profile, your Google account. Okay? I've started here with Gmail. Who's actually going to follow along so I know how, how, what pace I can go at? Can you tell us what the Internet code is here? Internet code? Yeah. I'm, I'm using Internet Explorer. It's CFRI uh, oh, oh, right. guest it's and CFRI 2014. Thank, Thank you. you. Lower case. Yeah. which is the pay-per-click ads. It all starts with pay-per-click ads or SEO um, if you're willing to put in the, uh, the time and effort for that to happen. Oh, man. I thought it was all this. You said SEO? SEO, yeah. Oh, SEO. Hold on. Let me make sure I'm on the right Wi-Fi here. Password again? CFRI C014. Capitalized or not? Capitalized. Uh, CFRI 2014. Go on the right. Uh, you commit permission to get in there. It's CFRI guest. That's the one. Yeah, you go in there and check if your VPN and all that is permission. Oh, uh, it's not accepting it. It says you're connected. Yeah, it says I'm connected, but I don't have. Uh, it's not. It's not looking through the portal. What it says is what it said.
like I said, it's live and unscripted, so we'll see what happens here. I, I do have a backup plan just in case this doesn't work here in a second. Try reloading your password. You're going to need to go to manage Wi Fi settings. Restart the computer. Restart my computer? <laughs> <laughs> I just did that online and it didn't help. It didn't help? Okay, she took it. Just check the Wi-Fi in. It worked for you. Hey, it worked for me earlier too. You got your yeah. oh, suggest the uh, Which one are you? Which one are you playing? This guy. Okay, let me try that. Wi-Fi settings on her network and internet. Did you get a tell? Coffee back there? No, she had to step out for a little bit. What about the other system? Go up you, got, you need to go to manage Wi-Fi settings under network. You want to go up there? Oh, I'm just telling you. Come say good. I do have a backup plan, but I was hoping that everybody else could use the device too. Why don't you try the Bright House one? This one? Yeah. Do you have a Bright House account already? Mm. No, I don't know mine. Is everybody else not If you normally that? connect at home, it should automatically connect you. Just attempt to log in. Use Bright House at home. Hey, Brad. You know, why don't you come I was telling you, go into network under settings. Yeah. And, then what? and then man, you got, you've got to put and manage the Wi Fi settings. You got to turn don't those be shy, on. Brad. Come on. And then what? A lot of us are having the same problem, though, so I'm guessing it's something with the actual well, Wi Fi. I, know, could be I, but I had to go in there and turn on manage Wi Fi settings. Once it's managed, then what? you, you got to click that to let it on. Blue. Right. Here's the plan I'm going to I'm going to tether my phone, so I'm going to be able to show you how to do it. Um, in the meantime, maybe Crystal or Nick could get Buffy to call and uh, see if she can help us out with that for everybody else. Would that be okay, please? Mm -hmm. Thank you. tethered on my phone, so you guys probably will not be able to get online unless we can get a hold of Buffy. Alright. So I logged into Google. I logged into my Google account. Okay. I started with Gmail because that's just where I normally start. Um, and now I'm here on uh, regular Google search and I'm going to search for AdWords. Alright, I'm going to, you know, this is from basics how we, how we do this. We're going to click on the AdWords, google.com slash AdWords. We're going to do start now. And tell me if I need to slow down. Okay, give me feedback because I can't see hands out there. Not very well. All right. I'm going to use a, uh, a template site. That'll work for me. I already have set up. Like Can I said, you uh, blow it up? You can't really see it. Okay. Wait, what are you putting in there? It's a website. Uh, Let's see if this works out. TV in the back can see it. Yeah, looks good. See it. Yes. Okay. I got a couple of guesses. All right. So I went to AdWords. I went to Google.com/AdWords, and I said and there was a button that said Start Here to start my first campaign. And check the spelling on that website. The 
the spelling on the website? That you typed in. No, I went to Google and I did a search for AdWords, which is the one I showed you in the presentation. Mm -hmm. You said your name on your website. Oh, okay. gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, no, my web page is, is going to be for uh, just to show you guys, you know, it needs a web page to be able to do this. And that's why one of the assumptions is that you have a web page already. So a web page that I'm using here is a demo page. It's flfasthousebuyer.com, floridafasthousebuyer.com. Okay, so it asked me to enter my email address, asked me to enter my website. Uh, you, know, you can ask Google to give you tips or whatever you need. I'm going to do continue. What if you're doing multiple websites? Can you have to use different Gmail accounts? No, you set up you set up your initial uh, your initial account with uh, your main email, and then you'll set up multiple campaigns, and each campaign would be for a different website. You have to use a Gmail address. You can't use other emails. I have never tried it with other email addresses. I'm pretty sure you can. Um, I like Google. I'm a fan of Google, so I've always just gone with the Google email address. But yeah, I'm, I'm sure you can use it with other email addresses. They want your money. They're willing to uh, willing to help you advertise in any way they can. What's going to happen with that email address? I mean, they're going to be communicating with you there. Yeah, if you ever have to uh, see up here in the corner, actually, if you ever have to call Gmail or uh, Google, they will identify you by your email and your customer ID number. Uh huh. Okay. So they've just set up an account for me right now because I've never set up this email before. But that's, that's a new account number for this. Is Google website. AdWords Express, is that free or? AdWords Express is a very stripped down version of AdWords. I do not like it. It doesn't have as much functionality or as much control. Um, I like knowing exactly what my ads are doing. So I tend to not go with uh, AdWords Express. And uh, I'm glad you pointed that out because I want to switch to AdWords. Okay. Do you have to pay for that? You only pay when somebody clicks on your ad. So to set up everything is totally free. And nothing is paid until you, uh, until you activate your ad and somebody clicks on it. I mean using AdWords instead of AdWords Express. No, no. Totally free until somebody clicks on the ad. Okay. Uh, we haven't seen, uh, um, look at that. All right, so I'm in uh, AdWords regular, that's non non express version. Okay, the first thing it's going to ask me to do here is it's going to ask me to uh, set up a daily budget. Okay, daily budget um, I like to think of in terms of a monthly budget actually. Uh, like I said before, in the can't hear me in the back. Can you hear me okay way back there? Yeah. Okay, you got to speak up. Let me know. Let me know. Um, maybe I can stand up. So the daily budget, uh, I like to actually look at it as a monthly budget. Um, if I know that it's going to cost me about $500 to get a single deal, then I would say, you know, I'm, I'm willing to take on one deal per month. So my budget is going to be $500 per month. Your criteria may be different. Maybe you want two or three deals. Um, so you just put more money in the pot. Um, you, take that, uh, you take that $500 and just divide it by you know, 30 days, 31 days, and you get your daily budget. Okay? In this case, it would be $16. $16.12. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in there. Okay. Just doing some calculations. It's telling me the stuff on the side to have a potential reach. I don't always believe that because I found it to not always be true. Um, I'm just going to click save. Now the locations. Are there any questions so far? Do you have it written down so that we can take like a flyer home with all of this information? Or no? no, but we'll have a, a, a copy of this presentation available after we clean it up. Perfect. Yeah. Or a copy of the, the video or something. All right. Um, all right. So next we're on to locations. All right. Uh, I like specific locations within the United States. I don't like uh, doing my investing out of country just yet. So I clicked on advanced so I can start picking more specific locations. Okay. I'm going to just use my mouse to scroll and zoom into Florida. 
Is this where local search would be controlled as well? This is where you control exactly where you want to target your ad. Okay. Okay, so uh, give me an example of location to target in this area. Three, two, Three, two, eight, zero, seven. Three, two, eight, zero, seven. No, it's eight, zero. Oh, that one? Yeah, okay. Perfect. Now I'm targeting that location. I'm targeting that zip code. We can target cities. We can target zip codes, we can target congressional districts, we can target states, countries, counties, you name it. Wow. What do you want to target? Throw out some examples, I want this to be interactive. Can you target a school zone? Great question. I don't know, I've never tried. You do radius. Yeah, you can do a radius targeting. I don't think it I don't think it picks out school zones, but it'll definitely get the zip code. How do you usually target? Uh, I generally like to target by county. I'm willing to drive. Like, my, like I showed you that property is in Newport Ritchie, I'm willing to drive, so anywhere in the county is fine for me. Um, but I do have clients that target zip codes, that target towns, that target specific locations. It just really depends on what you're into. Um, one thing I will say, hold on a second. One thing I will say is the tighter, your, the tighter your geographical target, the more you're limiting the volume of people that are there. There's only so many deals per volume, right? We estimate there's about one deal, for, one deal at any given time for every 100,000 people or so. That's any given day. Okay, and that's like a very motivated seller, because that's what Nick and I are looking for. Your criteria may be different. If you're looking for rentals, there's probably a lot more available. You know. So what I'm saying is, make sure you pick a broad enough geographic area that you include enough people that you're going to get the amount of deals that you want on the time scale that you want. One, well, sorry, I was going to say, do you think a county might be might fill the bill for that you just said? For me, we're doing we're looking at two to three deals a month. We pick multiple counties. Multiple counties. Yeah, we're covering Central Florida. Um, just as an example, uh, I put a car magnet. I put a magnet on my car, you know, and I had I had a magnet on my car that said, "We buy houses, cash fast." Three, you know, phone number. I had that car magnet for like three years. I got five calls because I only go on the same route every day. I have a limited population that's seeing my ad. Same thing with online ads. If you have a limited population that's seeing it, it's going to take a long time to get those calls. It's going to happen eventually, you know. So you have to know what you're looking for. You have to know what you want as a as an investor, as a business. If you want multiple deals a month, you've got to get a lot of people. You've got to put a lot of people in that funnel. You're talking about a thousand people at a time just to get a single deal. You need to fill that funnel as much as you can. Does that make sense? You said a yeah. thousand, and then you said a hundred thousand. I don't understand. Right, because not everybody is a motivated seller that wants to go online and search for sell my house now. Oh, uh, okay. So right? if you'll do that, then, yeah. then it's a thousand to get down to right. the floor. Okay. Right, right. I mean, if you have a population of 100,000, not all 100,000 are motivated to sell their house right now. <laughs> Unfortunately. Okay. Unfortunately, exactly. So we estimate there's about one in 100,000 at any given time in any location. Uh, so, yeah, so um, we can do... Can you do, uh, like, neighborhoods or subdivisions? Like... I don't think it'll go that tight. You can definitely do neighborhoods. Can you do neighborhood specific? Yeah. Um, you got one in particular? Yeah. If, you, if you zoom in, you can get a, a tighter. Uh, okay. Try the states of Field Street. Yeah, I don't know if you can call it out by name. Estates of what? Field Street. F I E L D S T R E A F. I typed in an area and it ended up giving me the zip code of what that area is. Yeah, I've never uh, seen it. If I'm not mistaken, that. you can move that line. 32825. You can do this. Come on. Alright. Yeah, this is what it has available at this level. So I clicked on this little uh, this little shape box here. Right. These are the different regions that it has available at this zoom level, right? And then you can move those little level? dots around to kind of... No, the ones, the dots that you want, you click on. So if uh -huh. I want the uh, Orlando Science Center oh, area, gotcha. okay. I would click on that zip code and I would say add. Right. Right. Uh -huh. um, if I don't want, uh, if I don't want Pine Hills, then I would say exclude and no ads are ever going to show ever. Oh, gotcha. Right. Um, now you can, there's, so there's a variety of ways to do this. You can say, okay, well, I'm willing to drive five miles from my house and, uh, Oh, five mile radius? Yeah, and so, oh, okay, my house is um, here. Right. Okay. 
okay? And then I could just say add, and it'll pop it. It'll say everything in that five mile radius is now in my add zone. How did you remove Pine Hills? Uh, when you click on the little dot, like you could you could call out Pine Hills specifically and say exclude, oh, okay. or you could click on the dot and, and it gives you an option to add or exclude. How did you get those dots? Uh, I did that by doing a bolt locations oh. or uh, or even just a shape search. You can just oh, okay. zoom in. Uh -huh. Anybody have any questions about these things? So on the, on the flip side, only people with ISPs in those zones see those ads. Is that Correct. how it works? Okay. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Their IP ad, their IP address has to be in that zone. Okay. So they could or live in. To that zone. They could live in Tampa. The house could be here. They're not going to see it in Tampa. No. Uh, no. Okay. So that's not quite true. Because <clears throat> you can show ads to people who are located outside. I'll show you in a second. Okay. Uh, sure. There's options for that. Okay. All right. So are we good on the locations though? Everybody understands yep. that part? Yep. Okay. So we've chosen some example locations. So, okay, uh, all done. Um, okay. I'm going to save those locations. All right. Um, search network, display network, that's uh, if you want to show it on Google um, as just a text ad or as both a text ad and a banner ad. Okay, banner ads are for display networks. Uh, I don't, I personally don't prefer banner ads. Some people do. I tend to use just the text ads only, it's just lines of text. Um, and you can choose how you would want to do that with this option here. Is there a cost difference when you do the banner? Yes, there is a cost difference. There's also more effort involved too sometimes. Uh, you know, Google's willing to help you out either way. They want to see you succeed. All right, so now we're going to select some keywords. I need to get a drink. Uh, what are some, uh, oops. What are some good keywords? Yeah, I, I generally just go with the search network. Uh, that's usually my preference. But uh, either way is either way is good. Let me get a drink real quick. Water. We buy ugly houses. We buy ugly houses. Yep. Where is the part? All right. We're gonna type it in. Since I didn't see it on the list, we're gonna type it in. Ugly houses. We're going to add that to our keyword list. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, do we want any of these other keywords on here? This is what Google suggests for for what uh, for what we're looking at. Based on what it so it actually came up with these suggestions based on what it saw on my website, FloridaFastHouseBuyer.com. It went there, searched, said, "Oh, these people must be house buyers. Let me suggest these keywords." Should you always trust what Google comes up with? No. No, <laughs> no, no. no. Uh, definitely look at what they're suggesting. Um, they are not always correct. What about areas of town? Like water park or? Areas of town. So give me give me a suggestion. Oh, I think it's like uh, sell my house, winter park, right? Yeah. That's what you're saying. Or Baldwin Park. Sell my house, winter park. Just like that? Yeah. Yeah, you can add that. I buy houses, Orlando, or something. You know, you can. You can. So, and it's, it's estimating that there's zero people searching on that, which isn't always true either. Because somebody. All right. Well, so let me back up a little bit. Keywords are what people are typing into the Google search. Okay. So they're going to go to Google and they're going to do a search, and this is generally what they're going to type. They're going to type one of these things. Okay. When they type one of those things, you want your ad to pop up. Okay, well, this is what this is going to do. It's, this is telling Google that when somebody types in that keyword up there, this phrase, however long it is, I want Google, I want, I want you to show my ad to that person. Okay, so some, some philosophies say, oh, well, it's great to have as many keywords as you can have. Just put them all out there. Catch everybody. Well, you will probably catch everybody, and it may not be the kind of deals you're looking for. Right? If you know what you want and you know what specific type of strategy you're going to use, I recommend you niche down on your keywords to get exactly what you want. Especially if you're paying per click. Especially if you're paying per click. Right. Exactly. Um, you know, that's one of the issues that I have with mailers is I did mailers for a while. I would toss mailers out there in specific locations and then I would get people coming back with all kinds of requests. You know, with all kinds of needs and wants and desires that I didn't care to fulfill. Uh, so I switched to online ads so I could get something more along what I wanted. So the keywords make sense. Do you understand what I'm talking about keywords? Does it need to be exact? Like you can make them 
as exact as you got, want. We buy, we buy ugly houses. If they just search, you know, ugly houses, there's their chance that your house uh, would come up. Yeah, no, Google is smart enough to know that ugly also means crappy, junky, fake, false, you know. Oh, so it isn't just those words. It's not those. It depends on how you rank the keyword. It'll, right. it'll find very close matches. Uh, buy, purchase, kind of word. It, it depends on how Google defines a close match, though. Yeah. So that goes into the history of uh, all searches that have ever been made on Google, and how many people there are. That so these are, these are only these are only specifying searches from now on. People in that specific area that we targeted. Right. If they type any one of these or something very similar, right. it's going to show your ad, or it'll put you on the list of people showing an ad. Yeah. Well, what I'm asking right. is, you're, you, each one has a number there. Popularity. So yeah. Is that it's a popularity or people that actually yeah. click or, or search with it's, that particular word? It's actually a, it's actually a relative popularity. Oh, okay. um, it's not an absolute popularity. There wasn't like 9,900 people so, yesterday. So that Google has taken a wild ass guess that that's going to be done. <laughs> a, a very educated guess. They have all the data, but okay. you know, yeah. So, yes. Right. So for our client, so the market's always moving. The market's always changing. Can you repeat the right? question? The question was, is 15 to 20 keywords like they suggest up there, is that a good idea? Um, and my response is that the market's always changing. Uh, we actually use a set of about 3,000 keywords, and we use a subset of those about every week. We're always changing the keywords that we're using. We're always, because it's always moving. This is a very moving, very liquid game. Um, the sets that we use are generally 30 to 50 keywords, depending on how things are going, and that's at any given moment uh, for any one of our clients that we're that we're working for. Yes. If you you say you're spending $500 a month on this yourself. If, if somebody is, if the cost per click is $10 per click, it's about $500 per month for a single deal. Right. So how much time is, is you and your wife work together? Is it? Uh, uh, I do this. I, I do AdWords, Google, or uh, excuse me, Nick does Facebook ads. Okay, so how much time do you spend? I actually have a VA that helps that helps me with this business. Uh, he's in there every day. He's in there every day. So um, an hour, what, an hour a day? Uh, yeah, hour, two hours a day. It depends on how things are moving. So purely on, but there's, and there's so more purely on, the, on the, I don't know, you're saying 500, let's say $1,000 or something like that. You're spending $1,000 in advertising, let's say. And he's, spe and he's spending well, he's in the Philippines 10 hours, he's, okay, yeah, whatever it is. He's me $4 yeah. an hour or whatever it is. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, but he's doing an hour, two hours a day. Okay. Yeah, every day of the week. You get a deal, you make money. You pay the guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I also want to say that that at around 15 to 20, this is just to get you set up. If that said add 3,000, it'd be like overwhelming and you'd never add 3,000 keywords. Right? So this is just to help you get going. That's why it's the 15 to 20. Right. You can change keywords. Yeah, you can, you can change more. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but we could delete all those and add one. Yeah. You yeah. said that you, you have a three thousand a bank of three thousand words and you're always shifting them to, to include thirty to fifty different keywords. Mm -hmm. I mean, are you why do you do that and how, what do you go by to decide what you do? Sure. Uh, well, you um, so how's the market been lately? It's been going up. Is it harder to do rehabs right now? Is it harder to get motivated sellers that want to sell at discount? Yeah. yeah. The market's changing, right? So now we're switching over to owner financing. Owner finance works with people who are looking to sell more at retail. Right. Market's changed. We right. change our ads. Okay, I got we you. adapt to it. All right. Yeah, and that happens over time. You know, if an ad's not performing, and I can show you how to look for that, mm -hmm. you get rid of it. If a keyword's not performing, check it. Get the next one. You know, try it out. It's a constant, constant process, always evolving. So yes. the, the when you say the keyword is not performing, does it tell you when a keyword works? We're gonna get there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions, Jennifer? I'm doing something a little different. Um, than, than what you're discussing here. What if I have people that I'm trying to get that aren't motivated, but if they heard of what I was suggesting, then they would be interested? If they're interested, then they're motivated, aren't they, to some degree? Well, I'm trying to get like people that have too much money and have it in their IRAs and, and need to make better returns, mm -hmm. but they're not necessarily staying up at night, you know, panicked like a motivated home seller is. So how do I get right. those kind of people? Well, I've never advertised for those people personally. Um, I've thought about it in the past, and I mean, it really comes down to you know what is that? What what are the pain points for that person? To, to put it kind of awkwardly, you know, what is it that they need? 
Are they going online and searching for how to get better returns? Is that something that they would do? I don't know. I'm looking at like doctors and people that don't yeah. know anything about investing, want to do something productive with their money. And I mean, you where would they nothing to do with real estate, but just put something about the medical field and when the doctor searches for something medically, it has nothing to do with what they're looking for, but yours going to pop up and maybe that would trigger their head. Oh, I do want better returns. That's not what I'm looking for. They're looking to get returns on their money. Maybe they're looking at new IRA accounts. So you have some key words about new IRA accounts and you catch them on the way in. You know, oh, I'm looking for a new IRA account. Oh, this person's getting 12% instead of 10%. Oh, maybe I should check out that website. But, right? Or Facebook ads for that. Facebook yeah, ads. Yeah, maybe you know, Facebook's that. better than Google for that. Yeah, in some cases, Facebook works out better than Google. Maybe Secrets Facebook. doctors use for increased profits. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Have you searched that yourself? <laughs> All right. So once you're satisfied with your keywords, go ahead and save that. All right. Uh, the bid. Uh, Talk about the bid. This gets in a little more advanced type stuff. Um, I generally let Google set the bid for me. Um, how many of you have seen me talk on this stuff before on online ads? Okay, a couple people. Okay. Um, so, AdWords, Google has a lot of data, right? There's a lot of people that are advertising on Google for a variety of things, everything in the world. And the there's a cost associated with each one of these keywords because there might be multiple people that are competing against you for the use of that keyword to show their ad. So the cost per click goes up and down during different times of day. An advertiser might only want to advertise before 10 a.m. You might have multiple advertisers doing the same thing, so the cost per click might be higher before 10 a.m. And then multiple advertisers drop out, and now the cost per click goes down. And then after lunch, they pick up again, and so and so. So the cost is always moving up and down. So when it comes to the bid here, you can tell AdWords, hey, I'm only willing to pay $10 per keyword, that's it. Okay, and they will max you out at $10 per, per keyword. Now, if the keyword never dips below $10, too bad. You never get shown. Okay, but if it does dip below $10 during the course of the day, you get lucky. You get to be shown during that ad time. Okay, but you're also competing against other people, perhaps. That's why I like to have Google do the bidding for me, because they're they're not going to, they're not out to.